Well, like the title says, updates, updates, updates. All right, where to start? Uh, the weather's warming up. The annex is getting built. I've got the tools out. The uh, 315 DIY build is getting closer and closer to its reveal, its live reveal. I got new fish for the Discus Aquarium, new fish for the 750. Oh, and uh, we're going to finish the, uh, the old riverbank of the 750, uh, plus a bunch of new additions for the 220 uh, flooded forest discus tank. Not only just fish, but also some plants. Let's go. So when I say wetlands filter, if you're wondering what goes into that, well, here is part of it. Sorry, I can't walk by the uh, Malawi River without getting a little glimpse of these guys. Man, I love this tank. <laughs> All the babies. Everybody's growing up. All my little cichlids are getting big. All right, let's go. So I think first thing we need to do is uh, get this other part of the riverbank section put in. And not to be outdone by the 220 uh, flooded forest discus, but the 750 Amazonian Islands, not only is it getting the rest of that riverbank put in, there's a lot of new fish in there. We're going to take a close look in a minute. But we're also... We're also going to address the lighting on this aquarium. Uh, so Triple S made a good point in the uh, comments on the last video is if we take those lights in the back, we lower them down, we put them underneath that bulkhead, we get a ton of light on the back of this aquarium and then we move these lights from the front back. You got to remember five feet front to back so we want to accentuate that so we're going to have very little lighting in the front and we're going to have a lot in the back and that should really help to accentuate the depth, the depth of this aquarium and really show off more closely what it looks like in person. It's obviously a lot to get to, but uh, you know who knows, maybe we'll even uh, prune some of the jungle vowel in the Asian jungle aquarium and uh, take a quick look at those guys. Everyone's getting big in there. So half the fish have come out of quarantine and they've been added to the aquariums. And I'm gonna show you those guys in a little bit, uh, but there is some serious fish and plants coming next week. Some really cool stuff. But before we get to that, let me go ahead and install this wood into the 750 gallon and let's take a closer look at that and also I'll make the lighting adjustments and then once that's done we'll zero in and we'll drill in on the tank and we'll show you all the new fish. And just a quick peek at the uh, 600 gallon. Yeah, I think it's finally time to uh, do some uh, pruning in there. Uh, <laughs> a little too much of a jungle nowadays but uh, overall looking good. Alright, so let's check on the 750. Uh, first of all, not only did we uh, take Triple S's advice and really pound some lights in the back there, put 300 watts of lights in the back, and then lesser wattage moving forward up to 150 in the front, we added a third row because the tank is just so deep, five feet front to back, that two just was not cutting it. And as you can see, even with a third row of lights, it's still not overpowered with light, but uh, it is an Amazon aquarium, so that is not necessarily a bad thing. I, I don't want the uh, aquarium to be super bright. I want it to look you know, more realistic, like uh, in a jungle river in the Amazon. Um, so a little bit of diffused lighting is okay. Plus, um, we've added a lot of wood. You can see we finished off the riverbank. We have all the way around the aquarium now, we have wood root coming down. And uh, <laughs> it's added some tannins, but it has definitely achieved the desired effect to get all of these cichlids out here, really everybody, uh, all of these uh, new small schools of fish, which I'll talk about in a minute, they are really utilizing that vertical space in the aquarium. So one of the big things it's done by adding all that wood root up at the top uh, is that uh, it's giving the tank the feel that there's sort of like a bend in the river and out here where the camera is, this is like the, the wider, deeper part of the river, and then inside there uh, you can see you've got a bend, you've got the riverbank coming down. Uh, the important thing, though, is it's created a ton of awesome territory uh, for the fish to swim in and out of, and they are all doing it. The small fish are schooling in and out of the root, and the big cichlids are using it as overhangs and cover to spread out throughout the tank. No longer are all the cichlids just hiding in the back, uh, sort of uh, by the islands themselves. They're just out and about everywhere, uh, which is 100% what I wanted to happen. Uh, the nice thing is that the uh, small fish have really taken uh, to swimming up in there and uh, ha seeing these uh, schools of fish swimming up and about inside of the wood root is really awesome. So let me talk about the, uh, the new fish. So uh, right up here in the front we have uh, a group of uh, 20 Pristella 
and 20 serpe, red serpe, etc. So those are the two new big groups. But also there's a refresher group of uh, red, blue, Colombian tetra, uh, because the old ones I have in the back there, there's still a good sized group of them, probably six or seven of them back there. But uh, they've been around for a long time, and I do have concerns as to how much longer they'll live. So uh, they're pretty old. I, I think they're, they were about six months to a year old in 2018, so they're getting up there. So I went ahead and got some, uh, some refresher fish for that group, that school, and uh, keep that going because they're one of the awesome uh, groups in the tank. But uh, the contrast, but this is, this is one thing I talked about, kind of one of my first loves with saltwater was that you could have large fish and small fish together, like a big angel or a big tang, and then have you know, little chromis or damsels or anything. So uh, being able to do that with freshwater is also something that I was really looking forward to. Having these, these groups of tetra intermixed with these large cichlids like the severum and the angels and the uh, true paracichlids and the geos. So that is definitely, to me it definitely makes the tank. Seeing these schools of fish swimming around in here makes the tank, uh, like I said, makes the tank. Just having the large fish, it wouldn't do it. It just doesn't have that same effect. This to me looks like a real Amazonian habitat you know, with the mix of fish. When I see the underwater footage, that's what I see is the, you know, the groups of smaller fish schooling together and the bigger guys further out. So it is definitely awesome to have that here in my fish basement. So one thing I want to point out is that the, uh, the wood root, obviously, it doesn't have the same coloration as the stuff that's been in here for a while, but uh, it will, it won't take that long. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous one, this video, this uh, piece of wood up front is new and it's only been in here about a week or two longer than the other wood and it's already changed color quite a bit so we are uh, it should just be a matter of time before it, has, it takes on a much more natural look with all that wood root coming down uh, one thing I was thinking is let's go let me go ahead and throw some food in here and uh, we'll get all of these guys uh, all these schools of new fish up and about here and get them feeding oh before I forget the other thing too is the wood root being really cool that they're swimming under but also the overhang from the lily pads definitely something that I was hoping would work out like that and uh, it has worked out so that's uh, that's definitely been awesome as well but uh, let me get some food in here we'll get all these guys out and about so the food uh, blew a little bit further to the right than I intended uh, one thing I've had to do is crank up the, uh, the power head there to push more water through because there's so much wood root that it's pushing through now that it wasn't getting the same flow at, like before um, so that is cranked up so I gotta get used to that when it comes to feeding so that I feed these guys in the right location to uh so one thing i want to do though was get the uh get all these small schools up at the surface taking food and uh and uh, they of course doing that um, but it's just crazy now it's i really can't uh, describe how much the the root coming in on the riverbank there has just extended the height of the aquarium it's brought all the fish up very high they're utilizing a lot more space it's just created so much more habitat it's just amazing what a, what a change it's made uh, in, in the viewing this aquarium. It was already a lot of fun to, to watch, but uh, it's definitely off the hook for me now. Just, uh, <laughs> it's just stuff going on everywhere. And I, I'm kind of, these new schools, I'm still just, uh, just pumped with uh, all the schooling action of these little guys mixed in with uh, the big beasts. So while a lot of the fish have uh, been pulled out with the wood root and uh, taking new territory, some of the big boys, they still like it back there by the big islands, but uh, that's to be expected. That's been their home for a long time. You know, the true parrot and the red shoulder, they're still uh, loving it back there, but they do come out here a lot more, and they are uh, recently moving all around the tank, as well as the geos and the albino redhead geos. They're all over the place as well. Uh, I'm probably going to do a couple water changes to dilute the tannins and all this new wood. Um, I had it, I like it the water sort of the, the lighting diffused but the uh, the water to be clear that seems to be the best look I think for this tank so I'm gonna try to get back to that but uh, shouldn't take too long and if I have to I could always throw in a little activated carbon but uh, last time just a few water changes was all it took to uh, get it looking sharp once I put in the uh, the drift the new wood the wood root so those uh, albino geos I oh, love those guys <laughs> All right, so the 750 Amazonian Islands, it has the full riverbank now. You know, we have uh, basically the bend in the river. 
for all the wood roots sticking in. We've got the schools of fish and uh, we've got uh, augmented lighting. So, uh, so the tank is definitely getting dialed in nicely and uh, we'll do a few water changes. We'll get it cleared up and uh, next time we check back on this, I expect that the wood will take on a more natural, darker look. Not that the light, you know, wood, not the light color from just being put into the water. And uh, I expect that we'll have uh, even better water clarity at that time. And, you know, who knows, I might make a couple little adjustments with the lights, but I think it's pretty good. So uh, we'll roll with this for now. Okay, so the 750 wasn't the only aquarium to get some new fish. The 220 flooded forest. We have new fish in here, but we also have more new fish coming uh, in a few days. Uh, so it'll take them a little while in quarantine and everything. But uh, the fish that are in here right now is the new ones, I should say. Uh, it's hard not to focus on the discus, but there's actually a school of 30 uh, glow light tetras to mix in there with my uh, rummy nose and uh, neon tetra. And I also lucked out and was able to pick up, I also lucked out and was able to pick up uh, 10 stir by Corys from a local fish store who had a local breeder drop some off and uh, they were only $9 each, which I thought was a good price for uh, stir by. So I uh, definitely picked up a school of those for these for this tank. <clears throat> so I picked up a, uh, a school of those guys, 10 of those guys for this aquarium. Let me see if I can find one. So yeah, here's one down here. They are quite small, but they are awesome and healthy and doing good. So there's 10 of those little guys in there. And of course, uh, this is think they're getting fed, so they're gonna block my filming. But uh, yeah, you'll have to trust me that they're there. And uh, the really big thing though, is uh, the fish that are coming this week. There's some really, really, really awesome fish coming, as well as some plants. So I wanna change the look some. You can see I've taken out a lot of the frog bit. Uh, it's, it's done a good job of controlling the nutrients. You can see over on the right, most of it's over there now, and you can see how much it darkens the aquarium. That's kind of the problem is, it, you know, with the water flow, it always ends up that way. So I wanna remove most of that, and I'm gonna be adding in some new plants that are coming this week to replace them. So the goal is to have the new plants take up the nutrient export that the uh, we'll be losing with the frog bit. Uh, and we'll still keep a little bit of frog bit in there, but I'm gonna keep it down real low. But uh, I want the new plants to add more green to the aquarium. So one thing I want to achieve is, uh, is having the lighting not be diffused so much with the frog bit, but also I want to add more green to the aquarium. Uh, there's nice ground cover with the dwarf sag, but uh, it doesn't give the overall aquarium as much of that green planted look as I want. I like the wood, I like the rockscape, the hardscape and everything. It just needs to be accented with uh, some nice green, big thick leaf plants. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I have uh, a group of plants coming in that'll be in the back there and the mid ground all across the back of the tank, which is gonna give it uh, a big burst of uh, color, of green color, a big pop, so uh, I think that's going to add to the tank quite a bit. That and again, the fish that are coming are going to be some awesome new fish uh, adding to here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll spill the beans. A couple of them are discus uh, because I'm loving the discus and I always thought about getting a few more, so adding a couple more to the to the flock here, but uh, as well as some other fish. It's not just discus, so uh, I'll cover all that once uh, they get through quarantine and they get into the tank, but uh, it's looking good, but I think the tank is going to look a lot better pretty soon. So just a couple updates on a couple of my aquariums and to let you know that the annex, uh, the heavy construction has started. Uh, that's going to happen this week so that's pretty exciting. I'll give you guys updates on that. Don't worry about that. Uh, as excited as I am for that, I'm not going to be able to hold back showing you guys. So you'll see how that's coming along. As well as I put a ton of work into the 315 live premiere. Uh, building out the wetlands filtration, all that, getting the tank all escaped and everything. That's coming along as well, so uh, lots of things to look forward to, and uh, at some point I will get deep into uh, redoing the 3,000 gallon, rescaping it, uh, all the changes that are coming. Like I said, that's going to be a multi-part series because it's just such a, a monster undertaking, but I'm going to figure out how to go about doing it, and uh, you know, I'll figure out a plan for it, and uh, we'll take you along for the ride as, as we go through that. And uh, it's, it's going to be massive because it's 3,000 gallon, but uh, like I said, I think uh, if it comes anywhere near my uh, mental image of the, the changes I have uh, planned for it, it should look uh, pretty awesome. Couldn't look worse than it is now because you can kind of tell I let it, 
I run down in the sense that I pulled out all of the uh, plants and everything and uh, it's, it's healthy tank but it's not attractive right now so uh, kind of want to set the bar really low so when I'm done you know I have a better chance of uh, making it look really really good on the first impression but uh, like I said there's lots of important things that are changing with it and changes with the lighting the uh, the filtration and the scape so uh, there's there's no way it's not going to be a huge improvement certainly over the current state of it so uh, something to look forward to lots of big things going on so as always thanks for watching I'll see you guys soon